Hello, I'm Andrew Pritchard, and thank you for watching today's Northeast Regional Forecast, brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions. So we look at the last 24 hours of precipitation, we did see some scattered showers and storms moving across parts of the northern regions of the Northeast region. Uh, that would be parts of Maine, New Hampshire, and Vermont, with scattered thunderstorms possible, or uh, scattered thunderstorms occurring across parts of uh, western Pennsylvania as well. We also had a corridor of showers and storms across the upper, late, or upper Midwest, and parts of the Great Lakes, and now we'll see uh, over the next 48 hours or so, precipitation activity begin to push into parts of the northeast region as an upper level low uh, spins through the area, and that shows up well on the next five days of accumulated precipitation from the National Blended Model, seeing the heaviest chances for precipitation across the north, parts of Maine, New Hampshire, and Vermont, and off to the south across the remainder of the northeast region, going to be much more isolated and scattered in nature in the form of some isolated to scattered thunderstorms. The next 10 days looks very similar. The heavier precipitation off to the north, uh, chances for scattered showers and storms off to the south, but this is going to be hit or miss with some folks missing out, others perhaps getting uh, some heavy downpours as we head through the next 10 days. With the corridor of the heaviest precipitation from the northern plains into the Great Lakes where we'll see my more widespread shower and thunderstorm activity over the next 10 days. So over the next week, Looking at the most active corridor being found from the northern plains into the Great Lakes right in this area, but outside of that, uh, from parts of the northeast region into the, uh, the eastern Corn Belt, still seeing isolated chances for precipitation, hit or miss in nature, so drier overall, but not completely dry. As we head into the week two now, so looking at around July 4th through the 10th, perhaps seeing this active corridor shift back south to something very similar to what we saw for the first half of July, first half of June, I should say, I apologize there, and that has implications for parts of the southwestern northeast region here, We're talking about parts of Pennsylvania that picked up on some of that thunderstorm activity during the first half of June. As we look at the rest of the northeast region, though, sticking very close to average, you know, you see pockets of dry, pockets of wet, but it's very low on the spectrum here, so overall expecting things pretty close to average as we shift things a little bit further south in the uh, week two time frame. Temperatures, June, June 28th through uh, July 2nd, uh, seeing slightly warmer to near average conditions across the northeast region, seeing our first taste of summer across much of the, uh, the Midwest and much of the Corn Belt here where it's been cool and rainy for the last, uh, what feels like the entire spring and summer to be honest with you, it really feels like the first taste of summer across the Midwest. As we head into the 10 days, uh, 5 to 10 day forecast, 6 to 10 day, I should say July 3rd through the 7th, uh, we begin to shift the ridge off to the east overall. Uh, and flatten that out and that kicks the warmer temperatures off to the east now so from the eastern corn belt into the northeast and then down towards the southeast is where we'll see those warmer temperature anomalies with cooler weather setting back up in parts of the central and northern united states current temperatures across the entire united states this is at about 10 o'clock in the morning uh, seeing this very warm air mass taking hold over the central and the uh, the eastern united states in this area, we're seeing rain-cooled air from thunderstorm complexes, keeping things a bit chilly uh, in terms of late June standards. We're talking about mid-60s across much of the upper Midwest into the northern plains, but again, warm and humid elsewhere across the central and the eastern United States. We'll play the, uh, the uh, high-resolution NAM model out for the next uh, two and a half days, getting us into the day on Sunday. And here's what we see. We'll go ahead and click through time with this just to uh, kind of uh, point out specifics. As we start the day on Friday, dry across the northeast region, seeing isolated showers and storms beginning to move into the area uh, late Friday evening, uh, but more widespread in nature as we head into Friday night and Saturday. This again across Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. Elsewhere going to be uh, remaining pretty dry. Then as we head into the afternoon Saturday, this is what I mentioned here, these isolated thunderstorms popping up along our front here, moving through the region, parts of Pennsylvania and New York State, picking up on that into New Jersey. Uh, so those will be isolated and scattered in nature. Some will be missed completely. Some will see some heavy downpours as we head through the, the afternoon and evening on Saturday. As we get into Sunday, this upper level low continues to kind of spin across the northern parts of the, uh, the northeast region. Again, talking about maybe eastern New York State, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. Uh, seeing scattered showers and storms even as we head through the day on Sunday. And that's why we expect heavier precipitation, more widespread precipitation to the north with more scattered and isolated in nature off to the south and west. We'll loop out total accumulated precipitation. This will show that pattern well. Uh, more widespread precipitation accumulation off to the north across Maine, New Hampshire, and Vermont uh, with more scattered in nature, but still the opportunity for some heavy downpours across parts of Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and New York State. The severe weather outlooks for the next three days. Here we have Friday, Saturday, and Sunday as we go across the board looking at uh, a very low severe weather risk to non-existent on Friday. 
as we head into the day on Saturday. That's when that front moves through with the, uh, the better chance for thunderstorms. We have a slight risk for severe storms across parts of Pennsylvania, parts of New Jersey, uh, New York, uh, and then also parts of Massachusetts, Rhode Island, uh, and surrounding areas in, in that area as this front moves through the area and then s shutting things back down as we get into Sunday. Still chances for thunderstorms, but that severe weather risk exits the area. It's just kind of a one-time thing on Saturday afternoon and evening as that front moves through the region. Overall, looking at the jet stream as we start the day on Friday, seeing this broad upper level ridge across the central and eastern U.S. that's kept us a bit warmer. You're going to watch this upper level low, though, across parts of Ontario dive across the northeast region. That's what brings the rain chances for the weekend as we play this out. Let's go ahead and get things started. There is that trough. Uh, we kind of flatten out the ridge across the central U.S. by the time we get to the end of this loop, and that's what may shift us back to a more active pattern across the uh, parts of the northeast region as we get into uh, the mid to late parts of the first week of July. We'll take a look at that here looking at the jet stream winds at 500 millibars on the left, precipitation and surface pressure on the right. We'll just go ahead and we'll play this out. We'll go through time watching this first storm system move through the region here Friday, Saturday, and then uh, the lingering on Sunday across parts of the northeast region here. This begins to kind of move out of the region. Uh, we see another short wave pushing in uh, by the time we get to uh, late Tuesday into, or I should say late Monday into early Tuesday, bringing a chance for rain to the area as the front moves through again late Monday into Tuesday across the northeast region. I'll take my arrow off there. And then as we head to mid late week, uh, seeing things shut down again across the northeast region. So it really looks like uh, Friday, Saturday, early Sunday, and then a late Monday into Tuesday is going to be when we expect the, uh, the best precipitation chances across the northeast region. Total accumulated precipitation from the European model kind of highlighting this corridor uh, really from the, the northern plains to the Great Lakes, but then also across parts of the northeast region where, again, Friday, Saturday, uh, perhaps early Sunday, and then again late Monday into Tuesday, seeing opportunities for precipitation across the region. Uh, elsewhere across the eastern Corn Belt into uh, parts of the northeast region, uh, drier but not dry overall, uh, still seeing chances for at least isolated to scattered thunderstorm activity as we head through the next week. We'll close out with high temperatures over the next five days. Your Friday high temperatures anywhere from the upper 70s in the north to near 90 or the lower 90s in the south. As we go through the day on Saturday, remember we've got more widespread shower and thunderstorm activity, the most widespread over the next five days moving through the region, keeping things a bit cooler. Sunday high temperatures on the back side of that storm system, a little bit cooler as well from the mid 70s to the middle 80s. And then as we get to Monday and then eventually Tuesday, things holding very steady. As we look at the, or as always, apologize there, as always, Eric Snodgrass will have a look at the next one to two weeks in our Monday morning ag forecast video. And then I'll have your next Northeast Regional Forecast update midday on Tuesday. Have a great day and have a wonderful weekend.